my team gave two weeks notice to go start uni, got fired on the spot. So my 18 years daughter was working at a juice store that rhymes with oyster mousse here in Canada, she gave her two weeks notice to go back to school and instead of keeping her on and training someone else up, they fired her. In this economy. Sadly she loved this job. She'd come home and would tell me about drawing cats on little kids cups to make them smile. I remember back in the 90s when I gave notice at my gas station job to go to uni, they congratulated me and asked questions about what I was taking and if I'd like to work over my breaks. How short-sighted are store owners these days when they can't find staff and then treat them like dirt? Well I guess they're teaching their staff to not give any courtesy notice, the idiots. Firing her on the spot makes no sense. It makes them short-staffed and it's not like a juice store has any major trade secrets they're trying to protect. A lot of managers are more interested in the power they feel they wield over their employees and when someone says they're leaving, a lot of that feels impotent, so they switch to the last thing they have, the most fuck you for daring to leave my web and think I don't control you action they can, termination. They know if they write you up, it's meaningless. They can tell you you aren't getting a raise, but you already left. A time off request is usually two plus weeks out, so they can't deny time off you wouldn't be getting. They can try to cut your pay, but you might just refuse to work the new hours. So they take the final word approach and fire you, so that they got to say they booted you out, not you succeeded them. TLDR, it's narcissistic pride and ego realizing that you no longer are theirs to control. They are really shooting themselves in the foot. I may be out of touch but it used to be that employees that left for college would often return during breaks and summers which was a huge benefit for companies, additional staff during holidays without needing to retrain brand new staff. So not only are they teaching staff to not give notice but they are also creating discontent in a potential pool of people that might have returned if asked. People love to talk about how entitled workers are but how entitled as an owner do you have to be to think you can just snap your fingers and have magically created replacements for your staff instead of having to train incoming team members with your outgoing staff. Small business owners are some of the most rude and entitled people on the planet. No matter how sickly sweet they are to customers, they often treat their employees like slaves. They hate their employees because employee pay is their number one expenditure and they think they deserve 100% of the profit simply by merit of owning the business. Most small business owners are owners because they lack the emotional maturity to take any sort of instruction or criticism, not because they possess any sort of acumen. What? No notice? I quit my job yesterday. I had an orientation at my new job in the evening, and decided I was done being scheduled seven days a week, working ten-hour days while the manager leaves several hours early, spoken to and treated like a subhuman mule, etc. I walk up to the store manager, hand him my resignation paper. Me. I came in to help, employees A and B, set up for the day. I got a significantly better job offer, and this is my resignation, effective immediately. Manager, what, no notice? Me, a two-week notice is a sign of respect, and a courtesy. I have received neither of these things during my time here. Take care. I don't feel bad at all. I gave several months notice to my last job before I moved. I even helped train my replacement. But treat me like peon and received nothing in return. Edit. Forgot to add, my direct supervisor is on vacation. I texted him heads up, I quit. Take care then blocked his number. My buddy quit by calling his boss. I won't be coming in to work. That is unacceptable we need you today. Oh, I meant I won't be coming in to work, ever. This is your notice. The alternative is you noticing when I don't show up tomorrow. If you ever get fired, Tell them they should have given you two weeks notice. It's a sign of respect. How many people have you fired and gave them notice? I am so sick of being forced to wake up early just to have my entire day sucked away from me. I'm only 22 and I feel like I'm gonna lose it I can't keep doing this. I am 46. This is still my life. Millennial, grew up with Gen X parents. I don't think they will be able to retire. My whole life my dad talked shit about social security because we all know it's not going to be available to us by the time we would qualify for it, and yet our pay will be deducted for it our entire lives. And I've watched as it's defunded and attempts are made to privatize it. The boomers really freaking lived it up their whole lives and spent our money before we were born. We were born into debt slavery to float the most truly ravenous and greedy generation this world has known. Work 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. My wife works 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. We see each other on her days off. She picks me up from work before she goes to work. I spend more time at work with these co-workers than I do with my family. 
it's f how to work our 8 hours we end up spending 12 of our daily hours for everything around the workday itself, getting ready for it, taking a lunch break near workplace, traveling to and from, it's so unrewarding. That's what makes work from home so much more appealing to me, I couldn't care less about seeing my colleagues if it meant I got that much more of my own life back, unfortunately not yet at a work from home job. This post has the saddest comments I have read, the despair and absence of hope are clear. Fascist manager so I hate using that word because the overuse of terms like that makes them less meaningful and impactful. But this is legitimately true. I am a Jew, and visibly so because I wear a yarmulke and zitzi. I was working freight at a Lowe's and one day we were short-handed, so our manager, who usually is busy dealing with truck drivers or forklift mechanics or whatever, jumps in to help unload the truck. He takes off his sweatshirt, and there on his forearm. Is a fascist. The bundle of sticks with an axe head. The symbol of fascism. I always give benefit of the doubt. So I thought, look maybe it's an old tattoo when he was younger and stupid. Maybe he went to jail for something minor and joined the Aryan Brotherhood because he was scared of the other gangs. I didn't bring it up immediately but a couple days later during a lull I pulled him aside and asked hey man, I don't want to make any unwarranted assumptions. What is up with the fasces? He looked me dead in the eye and said that he was a part of several neo-Nazi groups, then walked off and went back to work. According to the head HR director of Lowe's, that does not constitute a hostile working environment. Edit. Let me clarify the timeline. This took place several months ago. I worked at Lowe's during college and left when I graduated. Also my wording was poor, when I say he was a part of several neo-Nazi groups I mean that he was at the time of the story. If it was some dumb thing he did when he was 13 and an idiot, I wouldn't have gone to HR. But that was not the case. Lowe's won't do shit about it, but what they might care about is bad PR, if that is a route you're willing to go. Edit. This blew up apparently. Don't make up shit they hate us enough and being a self-confessed Nazi is more than enough. Don't do this if you'll be in danger for it. Op cannot be the first one to have seen this man's tattoos and will not be the last. I'm sure plenty of other people have noticed, even outside of work. Hell, someone else probably did try to out him already somewhere else. But the reality is, these kind of people know how to just walk alongside us in everyday life and often have deep connections in the community to be out so blatantly like this one is. You need backup of your own to do this and your own deep connections to your neighbors, your friends, and your support network, something the Nazis are notoriously better at having than us. I got to go to my own work now. Op, you might not be able to get corporate to do anything directly just for the tattoo, but you need to start documenting every interaction you have with this man. Document that you had this discussion with him where he told you to your face that he is a neo-Nazi. Quote him directly. Keep the dates you notified management. You need to start building a paper trail that not only did he share those beliefs to you directly, but that you notified people up the chain that he did on that date. Now every time you have an interaction with him, document it. Write it in an email to yourself, keep it easily accessible. If there's ever even the slightest hint that he's giving you a worse shift in favor of another coworker, or singling you out for something that many people on your team do, or any indication whatsoever that you are being treated unfairly, you have that documented. Because now you have a discrimination case. That's when you call a lawyer and show them what you have and ask if you have a case worth pursuing. F the HR department, F district managers. Boss keeps whining about how no new hires stay longer than a week. Meanwhile the job he's hiring for permanently disables almost everybody who does it longer than a year. They've hired at least 10 new people in the past three months, and only one has stayed longer than two weeks. Almost every employee who decided to accept the job had to quit after a few years because they developed chronic back or arm pain and other issues. My absolute fuckers of employers are now targeting high school students or recent graduates to bring into the factory specifically because they're younger and they should be able to work here for a while before it disables them. I feel like telling everybody who comes in for an interview to turn tail and run if they value not being in constant pain. Nobody wants to work hard anymore. Maybe nobody wants to become disabled for shit wages, no benefits, and having to put up with my piece of shit of a boss all day. You absolutely should tell new hires to run as fast as they can. In the break room, just now. Coworker, hey, can I get your cell phone number? Me, sure, give them my work cell number. CW, oh, I have that number, but I called you last night several times and you didn't answer. Me, uh, that phone goes in my backpack on silent when I leave the office. CW, can I have your personal cell number then? Me, no, sorry, my personal cell stays personal. CW, but then how am I supposed to get a hold of you after hours? 
Me, exactly. CW stares incredulously as I smile and walk away. This happened at a retail job I worked, except it was a manager. They had the cell numbers of other people in the department and said, how come I don't have your number, Kiltrox? To which I replied, verbatim, I don't want the hassle of billing the company for working off hours. The subject was dropped after that. Hey. I love you. Thanks for watching, I hoped you enjoyed this Reddit audio story, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe, or better yet, leave a comment about one of the stories. Thanks and I hope you have a wonderfully fantastic day. XOXO.